So what was it you were saying about the historic properties that they're, they're changing their focus? A lot kind of, of? Uh, southern sites, plantation houses, uh, museums that have had history in the South for a long time are finally starting to look at their slavery issue because so often that was kind of just pushed back and the house was the focus, the, 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 the people that owned and lived in the house were the focus, but all the enslaved people who you know, were actually operating the place mm -hmm. were not really talked about and that's a big, big shift that's taking place right now all over the South. With heritage sites, mm -hmm. historic mm -hmm. heritage mm -hmm. sites. So it's, I hate this, this sounds so, did they send out some sort of email memo and say we need to start paying closer attention to this or I how's that work? I think it's a response to, to things that are happening, happening nationally right now. Hmm. Uh, it's just, it's a very necessary thing. Um, you know, you need to tell the whole story. I don't know that it was necessarily pers uh, something that was done on purpose, but it was definitely something that um, just kind of swept the, that part under the, mm -hmm. under the rug more complicated. But you know the interesting thing is as director of South Union Shaker Village in Auburn, Kentucky, they had a different take on all that. Yes. They, the Shakers. Yes. Uh, they had uh, African American and white members side by side from the very beginning and uh, they had equal rights within the village uh, and they lived in the same rooms together so it was a completely different dynamic at South Union than what we find um, in, in what they called the world outside of the Shaker Village. So when they went outside the world, outside the village, did people treat them differently because they knew that they had Oh, the Shakers were always uh, looked down upon because of their progressive beliefs. They also believed that women and men were equal, and men and women had equal power in the village, and uh, that did not go over well with the outlying community. Uh, they were always sort of derided for that. Yeah, kind yeah. of outliers uh, out there, right? And they were doing things that you know we're talking about now, 175 years ago, and it's an unfortunate that it those changes didn't come till so late in our in our country overall. Yeah, but they died off because well, of their still beliefs today. Well, but they they were celibate. They were. They were. Okay, so you know they couldn't procreate and continue. Uh, yes, and they had hoped they would continue to grow by conversion. Uh, just like the, the orders of nuns and priests and monks, but um, people just weren't willing to live that, um, that lifestyle. So yeah, it was a continual decline. Yeah. I'm, I'm remembering that I uh, interviewed years ago a descendant. She was 93. Mm -hmm. It was there at South Union. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and looked at that camera and she said, those people were crazy. They didn't have sex, you know. And and, and I just I just remember thinking, well, yeah, they could have carried on the, That's their been a beliefs. That's a long time ago. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. I remember that one. But so the shaking. Why 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 the term shaker? They um, had some sort of a ritualistic dance in their worship, and people made fun of them and called them shakers. That's all there is to it. And they accepted it and um, began to call themselves shakers and use that as a marketing tool. So when they're selling their brooms, when they're selling their linen, whatever they were marketing, they used the, the, the Shaker moniker and it made money for them too. Let's circle back to where we started and we were talking about the enslaved and how heritage sites now are uh, focusing on that, mm -hmm. telling that side of the story. At Shaker Village, you don't really need to tell that story, So, but you're telling something. What are you we telling? We are and, and we're fortunate and I, I'm proud of that history, uh, the fact that we don't have to tell that difficult story of enslavement um, because of the Shaker's stance of on equality right from the very beginning. It was so so different and so forward-thinking. Um, so the story that we're telling is not uncomplicated because they're still dealing with Kentuckians who were coming in uh, and sometimes a, uh, a white man would come in with his slaves and then the Shakers are telling him he has to be on equal footing with him and there's some, there's some challenges there. You couldn't be a slave owner and be a Shaker. You had to immediately free your slaves if you came in. So you know there had to be some social issues, uh, emotional issues attached to that. And people did that. People the slave did owners it. did it. People did it. Wow, what a story. Yeah. Yeah. What the a story. lifestyle was so good at South Union. I think it was appealing to people uh, who might have had a difficult time. Uh, single parents a haven for single parents because your kids got an education, they got taught a trade, they were fed three hot meals a day, they're in a modern environment with clean spaces and warmth in the winter. 
you can't you can't deny that wasn't bringing people in the door. No kidding. Tommy Hines, thank you for sharing that story. Yes, yes, Tommy Hines, do. the director of South Union Shaker Village. You're watching Coffee Near Me, and we're coming to you from Lost River Creamery in Russellville, Kentucky. Who would you like to sit down and have a cup of coffee with? Let us hear that. Tommy, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.